Who wants a Skittle? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure um, one. Yeah! Well done! Here, toss me one. Let me try. Yeah. We live in strange times. But we live on an even stranger planet. Welcome to Earth. From a cosmic point of view, it's unique. The only world where the matter of the cosmos has become alive and conscious. Earth is sometimes called the Goldilocks planet. Its conditions not too hot or too cold, but just the right temperature to allow life to blossom. A large part of what makes Earth so hospitable is its natural greenhouse effect, which keeps the planet on average at a comfortable 15 degrees Celsius. But in the last hundred years, humans have been interfering with the planet's energy balance. Mostly through the burning of fossil fuels that add carbon dioxide to the air, one of the primary gases that contributes to the greenhouse effect. Of all the carbon emissions produced in the whole history of humanity, around 20% have been produced in just the last 15 years. We're changing the carbon composition of the climate now probably about 10 times and maybe as much as 100 times faster as has ever happened in the entire history of the planet. Every time one of these transformations has happened, again, at least 10 times slower than we're doing now, it's been accompanied by what's called a mass extinction, which is when a huge slice of the planet's life dies out. In 2015, Houston was hit with what's called a once in 500 years flood. Caused widespread damage and left parts of the city in ruins. All gone, everything's gone. The following year, the city was hit by yet another 500 year storm. More than 50 inches of rain across Houston, the most ever recorded from a single storm. And the year after that, another 500 year storm. You know, obviously climate change has made that term 500 year storm a little outdated, but I think it helps us to, you know, to just think about what it's supposed to mean. It's supposed to mean a storm that you would expect once every five centuries. No, no, kind of this way, you're going to want the English to see you. Oh, this way. The arrival of Europeans in North America, the waging of a genocide against the native people, the building of a, of a colonial state, the fighting of a revolution, the building of a slave empire, the fighting of a civil war, industrialization, World War I, the Great Depression, World War II, the Cold War, the age of the American empire, the end of the Cold War, the end of history, September 11th, the financial crisis, all of that time, you're talking about a storm that you expect to hit once during those five centuries, and Houston's been hit by five of them in the last five years. So we're literally talking about millennia of natural disasters being compressed into a period of just a couple of years. For the last 10,000 years, the Earth's stable temperature sustained all of human civilization. And now that Earth is gone. The planet now is about 1.2 degrees Celsius warmer on average than it was before the Industrial Revolution. So one degree sounds like basically nothing, but it actually puts the Earth outside the entire window of temperatures that enclose the history of human civilization. I think it makes sense to think of it as like we've landed on a new planet. The year 2085. The atmospheric level of carbon dioxide has doubled to 540 parts per million. What kind of world have we created? A better world, a more productive world. Fossil fuel companies would have liked us to think that this is the natural byproduct of man's evolution, and that actually... A doubling of the CO2 content of the atmosphere will produce a tremendous greening of planet Earth. But when that didn't catch on, and companies were forced to recognize climate change as a threat to the planet, they shifted the focus to us. 
From the moment you wake up, you personally have the power to make a difference. Ride a bike, take the bus, and most importantly, buy the right products. The language of this, right, is that this is all of our faults. You know, maybe BP has more of a responsibility. What size is your carbon footprint? But if you're not doing your part, then why would we be expected to do our part, which is totally obscure, as you know, the, the real bare facts of, of a climate crisis, which is that some 90 corporations are responsible for roughly two thirds of carbon emissions. The message is that only individuals can make change. And we know that that's just not true. And the reason why companies like British Petroleum or Beyond Petroleum, whatever they're calling themselves these days, make up these lines about the carbon footprint being the problem with the climate crisis is to obscure responsibility for who's actually causing this. Je n'entends pas d'objection. L'accord de Paris pour le climat est accepté. That's why the nations of the world came together to pass the Paris Climate Accord a global agreement to keep warming below two degrees Celsius. It's somewhat, I think, deceptive to think that this is a success. There's no enforcement mechanism at all in this agreement. It's easy to agree to something when you announce the pledge yourself and when you know you're not really going to be held accountable as to whether you meet the pledge or not. Two degrees. Two degrees. Two degrees. Two degrees. Two degrees. Two degrees, two degrees Celsius. Paris has become synonymous with the commitments needed to stop climate change. But the way we talk about Paris creates the impression that two degrees of warming is safe, manageable. This couldn't be further from the truth. You don't have to get to worst case scenarios of four or five or eight degrees of warming to really freak yourself out. Two degrees is quite, quite scary. With future sea levels projected to increase in the range of 10 to 100 centimeters by the year 2100, entire island nations could be submerged. Anticipating the coming wave of migration, former Marshall Islands foreign minister, the late Tony de Broom, equated the displacement of populations and destruction of cultural language to genocide. According to the UN, we could have also as many as uh, 200 million climate refugees. Actually, they, they say the number could be as much as a billion. You know, just to put that in context, the Syrian refugee crisis sent 1 million Syrian refugees into Europe. And the UN says, on the conservative side, we're talking about 200 times as many. In 1974, an interstellar radio message containing basic information about humanity and Earth was sent to globular star cluster M13. It was humanity's first conscious attempt to use radio waves to communicate its existence to alien civilizations. Since then, through various means, we've sent messages all over the stars. We've also been listening. Patiently. It is capable of scanning more than 8 million radio frequencies simultaneously. There is some chance that in the next few decades we will get a signal from some spectacularly distant, spectacularly exotic civilization, and everything on Earth will, as a consequence, change. Source confirmed. Whatever it is, it ain't local. Of course, the universe is silent. One theory for its emptiness is that it's in its nature for intelligent life to destroy itself. A filter of sorts in the timeline of life. I think it's likelier that we were an accident to begin with. And that this kind of life is um, very fragile. That perhaps the filter could be behind us that we're alone because life itself is so improbable, requiring a perfect confluence of conditions infinitely rare, infinitely precious. Truthfully, in my mind, 
unless we can convince energy companies that they own a lot of this future, yeah. we can't make that transition with the speed that we need to make it with. So here's maybe a different thought. Clean up. Let's pay energy companies, the companies that extracted this fuel in the first place, let's pay you to clean it up. A new narrative is forming. We won't be hearing about the greening of planet Earth anymore, or tips on how to lessen our carbon footprint. Capitalism and the pursuit of profit, as much as any other factors, have caused the climate crisis. Instead, we're going to be hearing a lot of this. But what if we could take that awesome power of capitalism and the profit motive and redirect it away from contributing to the climate problem and instead harness that power to help solve it? That the economic model which makes them fantastically rich is the same that will absolve their sins. Not to reject capitalism, but to regulate tax and direct capitalist activity and market competition to help get there at least cost. The reality is far more dangerous, that the problem is at the root, an economic model based on ever-increasing extraction and consumption, profit for the sake of profit, organized to enrich the interests of the few rather than meet the needs of the many. It's a bitter pill, because these days, it's easier to imagine a future wrecked by climate change than a world without capitalism. All you gotta do is go there. Then you really realize what's going on. Despite this, a new young left is flirting with the critique of capitalism as old as capitalism itself. Capitalism has not always existed in the world, and it will not always exist in the world. Hey, what's up? Uh, this is a dangerous flirtation, though. Not because it's wrong, but because it challenges the economic world order that got us into this mess. Dangerous not because it's left, but because it's right. When I was born, the planet's climate was stable. And now here we are less than 40 years later, and we are on the brink of climate catastrophe. By the end of my life, I will have seen this incredibly epic story in which the planet went from stability to the brink of catastrophe. And then we did whatever it was that we did to try to secure and stabilize that planet for ourselves and future generations. We live in strange times, and there's a lot of uncertainty about what the future will bring. But one thing's for sure, whatever it was that we did, we'd better get started. That's great, it starts with an earthquake, birds and snakes and airplane, and Lenny Bruce is not afraid. Slice and burn, return, listen to yourself, churn, lock it in, uniform and football.